So when you're looking at these devices and you get in the lab, uh, get your hands on each of the devices and uh, get your feel for each of the cadavers so that in your hands you see which of these techniques you're more comfortable with. Okay. Okay, can you raise the x-ray? Yeah, raise the x-ray. That's a key thing to recognize when you're doing these procedures is give yourself working room underneath the, uh, the image intensifier. You need to have room to work. Go ahead, Pankaj. Okay. All right, so, um, so that was an excellent demonstration by Ramo, uh, posterior approach. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically um, demonstrate um, the posterior approach with hardware placement and transfixation technique, um, which um, Doug just mentioned that it, you know, transfixation satisfies the code um, 27279. So the approach is pretty much the same as what Ramo showed, and there are a couple of little things which we have to kind of make sure when you're putting the transfixation screws. So I'll walk you guys to the step. But the, the um, appearance of the SI joint line or the river line with the PSIS is pretty much what you, um, Ramo just showed you um, for the link device. So what I have is basically I'm doing the right side here. I've got about 20 to 25 degrees of contralateral oblique, which essentially, um, I think, uh, Doug, you can, oops. Doug, you can point that out. Um, there you go. So you, you see that, that's where the PSIS is going, and then you go right below the PSIS, and you can put your uh, Steinman pin in there. And, um, and the key, really, the, the majority of the procedure is basically placing this, uh, this uh, Steinman pin in the right spot. And, uh, okay. Now, once you, once you get this feel that your Steinman pin is essentially in, the, in that SI joint line, there's a couple of things to do here. What we'll do is um, go back lateral so we can look at the belly of the sacrum and the SI joint from the lateral uh, view. Yeah, full lateral, please. Okay, let's see. Uh, you may have to go up on you. Okay. Keep going. No. Um. Is it the bed? Do we have to go up on the bed? Or? Oh, that was easy. I think that may be too much. Let's see. So we, we're trying to look at that wire and the sacrum. There you go. Okay, well, we're gonna, I think there are some logistic um, issues here over the table, but um, so you see that Steinman pin coming in, so we know that we have the correct trajectory getting into the SI joint line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and um, once I confirm that I'm in the right spot over there, I'm gonna use my uh, pin, I'm gonna mallet it gently, and, uh, and essentially I am in the SI joint. Once I've done that, Again, like Ramo showed, the approach, all of these approaches essentially have um, um, a standard three or four steps, right? You put a pin in, put a joint finder, working cannula, decorticate, and then you can either put an allograph like Ramo showed, or you can do a transfixation uh, with the device, which I'm going to show. So I'm going to go ahead and make an incision here. Cutting down. Make sure and when you do the dissection, you can take a met scissors or you can take a bovi, like Ramo said. You can clear up some of the tissues around surrounding the Steinman pin so they do not obstruct your instrumentation. Okay, so the first step is, oh, let's see here. So the first step is, like I said, you put the Steinman pin in, you get into the joint, next step is joint finder. And um, like you see, the, the bigger aperture over here is for the ilium side, the shorter one is for the sacrum side. Okay. 
and you basically mallet it in. Oops, where's your x-ray? There you go. Do you have a bigger hammer? <laughs> there you go. So once your uh, joint finder is right there, crossing across the posture approach, you take this handle off. And you basically put your uh, working channel. Again, a larger aperture towards the ilium side and the shorter one towards the sacrum side. A handle. So you have the, it, there's an arrows marked here. This goes arrow to arrow. So you lift the working channel over here, and I basically stabilize this. So now this is basically your entrance to your SI joint. You have the working channel. Now there's a couple of steps in between. You put a suction, cut the suction tubing, go ahead and suction anything out. That way you would know if there is any kind of um, oozing or bleeding um, happening over there. Next step is, once you've done that, you basically go ahead and decorticate. There you go. So the decortication principle is pretty much the same, which Ramo showed you. You go ahead and basically take a couple of turns, go ahead and ream some of this bone out. And the next step is your um, tech is gonna basically get your implants ready. So if you guys wanna zoom on this, this is how the implant looks like. You have an implant filled with bone graft, and there's the screws which are used for transfixation are part of that entire um, system, and I'll show you how they're deployed. Again, there is only one way this would go. And you have this hammering cap, which you can actually insert on this hammer. There you go. So the way this implant is designed, as you'll see on the lateral x-ray, there's a head which rests against the posterior line of that sacrum or the sacral shadow, and that implant is basically within that joint. So the next step, if you want to zoom in over here for the screws, you have the, um, the sacral screw. Oh, yeah. There you go. Go ahead and uh, leave about a threads there. That's counterclockwise. And it comes out. You hand it over to your tech. The tech is going to load up the screw which is, the, all of these are color coded, so most of the times you don't have to remember this. If you guys wanna have a look at this, this is how it looks like. There you go, you can see the screw right there. And you go ahead and essentially deploy here. Again, a screwdriver concept. There are, there's, a, there's a white line there if you wanna show there. And all you have to do is to push down and basically go a few terms. Now you see that there's a recoil here, if you want to zoom on my hand here. So what that means is that you've attained the transfixation for their sacral screw, and so the next thing you do is you go to the ilium screw. You go up the same pattern, counterclockwise, you take it out, and hand it over to your tech. The tech is gonna load that color-coded screw up, smear it, um, and then hand it back to you and you go ahead and essentially put it. Same concept, color coded. There are white lines, green lines, and yellow lines, stop signs, and go signs. There you go. You basically push it down and you go ahead and keep on screwing it. 
And as soon as you go in, you see this recoil happening, you know you've reached your final destination. The screws are deployed, they're loaded up, and the white lines have disappeared inside that instrument, and you don't have to do anything further. And so at this point, you can let go of your hand, and we can do a couple of things. We can do some ch um, x-rays. Let's go back to that oblique which you had, Steve. I think it was towards you. Or it was towards me, sorry. No, oblique to me. And um, so let's see, uh, pull toward, yeah. Pull towards you more. Okay, so, so you see here that the two screws, and that's what I do is I do a, a, a check x-ray here. So you see those two screws basically popping out. One is on the sacrum, the other one is on the ileum. And so I, now I know that my transfixation is basically done. So the next step is essentially to take this whole thing out and leave the implant there. So what we'll do is go back to lateral. Okay, we go clockwise. So they, they have this um, um, cap, which you can go ahead and this is a little cap, if you want to do it by hand, you can do it. But you go basically clockwise, one at a time, and you hear a pop. And the pop is basically the, the, the screw is detached from the uh, deploying um, instrument. There you go. And then essentially what you can go and you take this out. And I just do a check x-ray over here. Uh, I may have to raise your x-ray maybe. And uh, I'm going to basically take this working kennel out. And so what I've, I have is this implant over there, which is right, right over Ramo's implant. So you can decide A is better than B or B is better than A. And, uh, and the screws are flanging out and transfixation. Now, you won't see that on lateral x-ray. So what I'm going to do is my final x-ray, which I'm going to basically upload in my EMR for the patient's uh, history, and, and basically uh, EMR notes is going to be on the on contralateral oblique. So Steve, let's go back to the oblique you had, about 20 or 22 degrees towards me. There you go, let me take a shot there. Oh, sorry. You may have to pull the x-ray towards you. Perfect. Okay, and then uh, go ahead and oblique a little bit more towards me. Towards me, a little bit, another five degrees maybe. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, so there you go. So what I'll do is I'm seeing both my screws over there across the SI joint. My barrel, which is filled with the allograft, is right in that SI joint line, and that's your transfixation device, basically. With that, I'm going to pass it on to Dr. Beal, who's going to carry on with the other two approaches. Thank you.